Hey everyone and welcome back to the Lambda series. In this video, we're going to write our very first Lambda function in Node.js. It's going to be a very basic function that generates a random number between two given numbers. So let's get going. Okay, so here I am logged in into the AWS console and we're gonna to go to the compute section and we're gonna click on Lambda to create our very first function. So we're gonna click get started now and we're gonna choose a runtime. We're gonna pick Node.js and we're gonna not and we're gonna pick Node.js 4.3, not the old Node.js. This is the legacy version. So we're gonna pick the latest version supported by Lambda, which is 4.3. And here you see a number of blueprints, some basic code that Amazon gives you. And we're gonna go for just a simple hello world, a starter AWS Lambda function. So I'm not going to set up triggers right now. We're just gonna write our code and set up this function, but we're going to connect this function up to API Gateway in a future video. So here I'm gonna skip it and I'm gonna say next. So I'm gonna name my function, I'm gonna call it random number generator, cause that's what it is. And we leave the description and we leave the runtime as we already specified this in our previous uh, step. Now there are three ways in which you can upload your code to Lambda. The first way is to edit your code in the online editor. Now this is fine for small snippets of code such as this one, but it can be quite tedious for uh, bigger projects. Now you can also upload a zip file or you can upload a file from Amazon S3. Now because this is a very small function, uh, I'm just gonna stick to the edit code inline option. So the blueprint of Amazon gives us a very basic function. Uh, I'm gonna run through what Amazon has given us and then we're gonna change it to generate some random numbers. So the first thing that we do is we enable strict mode. Now this is not really required, but it's a nice thing to enable. And then we log that the function is actually loading and this shows up in your CloudWatch logs and can be used for debugging later on. And then we add a handler function to the exports variable and this function receives three uh, variables, three parameters. It receives an event, it receives a context, and it receives a callback. Now the first two are not really important right now. We're gonna come back to these in a future video, but the callback is important. I'll come back to that later. So here we open up the function. Amazon just logs a few vari variables, a few values that uh, the event uh, variable has, and then it calls the callback. Now the callback is something that you should call when your function is ready, when you want to return something back uh, to your user. So this takes two parameters. The first one is an error, if there is any error. And the second one is a success message, something that you want to return in case of success. Now these variables can either be a string uh, or they can be an object. For example, they can be a JSON object that will then be stringified and returned to the user. So we're gonna just delete all this code that Amazon gave us and we're gonna write our own uh, code here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a, minim a minimum number. So we're gonna say that you have to generate numbers between zero and the max value, which is 10, let's say. And then we're gonna generate our numbers. So we're gonna define a new variable. Uh, we're gonna call it generated number. And we're gonna use math floor for this. And we're gonna use math random multiply that by the maximum value and add the minimum value to this. Now, the reason we do, we do this is because math.random in JavaScript only generates a random number between zero and one. Uh, and it's a floating point number. So we round it, so we first multiply it by the maximum, then we round it up and then we add the minimum. And now that we're done, we want to return this generated number. So we're gonna call the callback. So again, the callback takes two parameters, first an error message and a success message. Now obviously, nothing has gone wrong here. We don't have any error, error handling yet in our function. So we're gonna say there is no error and our success message is the generated number. Okay, so that's it for our code. Our code is finished, this should work. So let's scroll down a bit and let's define uh, our handler. So again, this is index.handler. Index refers to the file name. Uh, in this case, um, this is the index.js file. And handler is the name of the variable that you attach to exports. So we're gonna leave this by default, this works. 
and we're going to create a new rule to execute this function. We're going to give it uh, a name, basic lambda uh, execute rule, for example, execute rule, and we're going to give it uh, some permissions. You can give it any permissions you want. We're going to just pick the simple microservice permissions. This gives us enough permission to uh, run this piece of code. Next thing is the advanced settings. Each function is run inside a container and that container has some memory allocated to it. So here you can pick how much memory should be allocated to your function. Uh, this is a very basic function, so 128 megabytes is more than enough for this function. This not only defines the memory that is attached to your uh, function, but also the amount of processing power that Amazon uh, uses for your function. So if you have a more resource intensive function, you might up the memory usage and you will get a faster performing for my function as well. So we're gonna leave these to the default values. Uh, 128 megabytes is more than enough for this random number generator. And a three second timeout is also more than enough. Now. Watch out for this timeout. If your function hasn't finished within this timeout period, Amazon just kills it and returns an error message. So make sure that you set up your timeout correctly. We're not going to configure VPC here and we're just going to go next. And Amazon lets us review the details of our uh, function here. This all looks great. So we're going to go ahead and click create function. And there we have it. Congratulations, your Lambda function random number generator has been successfully created. And this is the dashboard for uh, our function. You we can see here our code, we can see our configuration, everything that we picked in the previous steps. We can see our triggers. We don't have any right now, but we're gonna connect uh, API Gateway soon. And we can monitor our function as well. So let's go back to code and let's test if this actually works. So we're gonna click the test button and if we scroll down, we can see the result of our function. So here we can see that the function has returned the number four. We can see the log output and we can see the summary. We can see how long the function took to run. It's uh, 0.34 milliseconds, how much we were billed, uh, how much uh, resource we, um, how much memory we got allocated and how many and how much memory you actually used for our function. So now it returned four. If I hit test again, it should return another random number. It's now at six. And if I do it again, it should be another number. Now it's seven. So there you have it. That is our very first Lambda function. So that's it for this video. I hope you find this topic interesting. And if you do, make sure to subscribe to this channel. In the next video, we're going to use our Lambda function and connect it to API Gateway so that we can access it over HTTP.